What's good? What's good? It's the one and only, but what do I know? Boxing coming back at y'all with another one, man. So we got oh my post fight review for the Canelo versus Berlanga undercard. Uh not undercard, but the whole card. Uh first and foremost, just a quick quick touch to uh, quick touch on Roley and um and his opponent, you know, Roley came out there. Uh, you know, Roley was Roley. He got the victory. Nothing really impressive. But Caleb Plant, I want to talk really talk about Caleb Plant. Um, Caleb Plant versus Trevor McCumber was a great fight. Uh, I mean, a great fight. Trevor was uh was was he, dude was a strong guy, and um and you know he caught Caleb. Now the knockdown that they said was a knockdown. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't believe that that should have been a knockdown. Like it, it was like it was more like a, I thought it was a push or whatever. But they they called it as a knockdown. He, he uh, caught Caleb with a straight like I, it was, I think it was like a hook to the um, but it was to like Caleb's shoulder. That's not a, a scoring blow, and um, and then kind of ran like kind of smothered in Caleb, and Caleb kind of fell at him. But it looked to me it just looked like a it, it looked like uh Caleb um, it, it didn't look like a legal knockdown. But look, Caleb was like catching him like coming in with, with like time to coming in or whatnot but then Kayla made a made an adjustment and this is what I love to see a fighters that can make adjustments um and it just it, it really really helped me um not help me but it, it just really made me appreciate Kayla plant even more Kayla made the adjustment because it was a close fight it was they were going back like a little back and forth the first five rounds right Trevor McCumbe was uh, was uh, was throwing <coughs> awkward punches and would catch Caleb with uh, with flush hooks at times. Um, Caleb Plant was would, would be sharp, uh, open up, com uh, create openings with his combinations and catch uh, Trevor on the back end. It was just a beautiful a, be a beautiful display of boxing. But Caleb Plant, like within the sixth round started going on the inside where Trevor McCumber had nothing for he had no answers for Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant will create that uh, create openness with that hook. I mean with the uppercut by throwing the hook to the body. Every time he threw the hook to the body, Trevor would drop the uh, drop the gloves and boom, that uppercut was open. Trevor was open for that uppercut. Boom, just catching a boom. And at that point, I was getting a little irritated and frustrated because like well, while as Trevor McCumber <coughs> was doing a lot of showboating Caleb Plant started doing showboat tuning, and I was just like, bro, Caleb, because it's just because I'm such a big fan of Caleb Plant. It was just like, Caleb, like, throw your, like, stop, forget all that showboat and get him, get his ass out of there, bro, because you, you, you'll land a good ass combination, and then you'll showboat, like, forget all that showboat, get him out of there. But Tre Trevor's a strong dude, bro, and, um, but those body shots was, was breaking Trevor down on the inside and then Trevor you know eventually got tired um and again he would just like allow Caleb Plant on the inside and where Trevor like would stand straight up on the ropes here's the thing about something that, that you guys gotta understand understand when you are fighting somebody on the inside you got to bend your legs because the straighter your legs are the less leverage you have and the, le the more arm punches you're gonna throw you're not gonna have anything on them punches with standing straight up you know what I'm saying so, Caleb Plant, um, you guys got to excuse me because I'm driving as well. Caleb Plant, um, I mean, just just um, what, just landed beautiful, just body shots, boom, then created, which then created the, the opening for the um, the uppercut, boom. So, like in the ninth round, Caleb Plant, then you know, just, Trevor's pr pretty much really tired. And at that point, Caleb Plant unloads the combination, snapping Caleb, uh, Trevor, Trevor McCumbie's uh, head back as, as he's dropping on the ropes. The referee stops the fight, and it's over. All right? So a good comeback. Very. That was probably the most... That that was that in, uh, that was like the inter most entertaining fight that night. All right? Next up, you have Ayers Lara versus Danny Garcia. A fight that I knew, like, bro, I, like, just like I said in my prediction... Ayers Lani Lara's style is just all wrong for Danny Garcia. I don't know what they saw. I don't know if they were banking on the fact that Ayers Lani Lara is just, he's 41, he's older, or what. But the style was just all wrong. And it was, a, it was you know, a very lackluster fight. Uh, <clears throat> at one point, like the first round, just to give you an insight on how the fight went, the first round, 
Here's Lonnie Lara landed like six punches to Danny Garcia's three punches. The second round, Airs Lonnie Lara landed ten punches to Danny Garcia's zero punches. And the third round, like that, I forgot. I think it was like, um, oh, Danny Garcia landed five punches to Lara's six punches. It was just more. Danny Garcia couldn't let anything go, get get anything off. Now I understand people are seeing this fight and saying Danny Garcia should retire. But before I get to that, let me just go ahead and break down the rest of the fight. Well, um, Danny Garcia, whenever he would try to close the distance, uh, he, well, he could never close the distance. That was the problem. He couldn't close the distance. He couldn't get in uh, reach. There's Lonnie Lara would just pop him with the one, one, two, pop him. Um, and, and just and whenever Danny Garcia tried to step in, Airs Lonnie Lara took that step back. He never allowed Danny Garcia to get in the range or uh, get in reach to set anything off. And Danny Garcia just was not mentally there. Airs Lonnie Lara can't remember the round through not even a hard left hand boom. Danny Garcia just took a knee and then as he came to the uh, to the um to the corner. Angel Garcia was just like, bro, he was like, what's wrong with you? And he, Angel Garcia just stopped it. Because, I mean, Danny Garcia was just mentally checked out. Now, a lot of people are saying, like, Danny Garcia should retire or whatnot because he didn't look good. I don't know if he should retire. I just think that was a stylistically, just like I said in my, in, in my, um, in my review, I mean, in my prediction. That's just a stylistically bad matchup for Danny Garcia, bro. <clears throat> I don't know what they thought they saw. But Arizlandi Lara's style is not a style for Danny Garcia to look good against, bro. It's just stylistically all wrong for Danny Garcia. So I don't know if Danny Garcia should retire, or I don't know if, if, if it's just, bro, that was just a very bad style for Danny Garcia. You guys let me know in the comment section what you think, think about that. But the final, uh, the main event, we had Canelo Alvarez versus Edgar Belanga now. Um, Edgar Belanga, Canelo won by unanimous decision. Edgar Berlanga, I it just he just did not have the experience in there at all. Alright. He was throwing these jabs, but the thing about it is, at this point of Canelo's career, <clears throat> you should after the eighth round, you should be ten, you should be really putting the pushing the uh the pedal on for Canelo Alvarez because again Canelo Alvarez throws everything so hard so hard, that's why he gets tired in the later rounds. But the problem is Edgar Belanga allowed Canelo Alvarez to fight at his pace the entire night. Edgar Belanga did not try to push the pace on, on Canelo. As evidence, go watch Canelo versus Triple G. Canelo did, could not fight only at his pace. He had to fight at Triple G's pace because Triple G did not allow Canelo to just sit there and dictate the pace the whole night. Well, Edgar Belanga was allowing Canelo to push him on the ropes, right? Not even push him on the ropes, walk him to the ropes. Edgar Belanga, Belanga was throwing his jab, his jab, but nothing following up and just allowing Canelo to push him back and control the range. Now, on the ropes, Edgar, Edgar Belanga did have... Now, the thing, the good thing about it is he had that backhand up, so he was catching a lot of Canelo's hooks. But Canelo timed Edgar Belanga, and Edgar Belanga actually fell for the bait. Canelo threw, dropped low, Can, Edgar Belanga fell for the bait. Canelo swooped around with that uh, with that hook, tying him, boom, and dropped Edgar Belanga. It was like in the third round. You know, Edgar Belanga got up, and he showed heart. I'm not going to lie that. I'm not going to lie about that. Edgar Belanga definitely showed heart. Um, he showed, you know, he 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 showed heart. He didn't fight like a scary fighter at all, but he you could tell he just had nothing for Canelo. He was throwing he was throwing a jab, um, and he was trying to throw punch back. He wasn't he 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 Canelo would throw a uh, throw a combination and Berlanga would try to throw his throw his off, but obviously he just didn't didn't you know. He landed a few shots here and there, but he just had nothing for Canelo Alvarez. No answers, no nothing. Canelo Alvarez was able to dictate the fight. Uh, Canelo was throwing a snapping jab, that was a beautiful jab. But in the later rounds, Edgar Belanga still allowed Canelo Alvarez to dictate, even though you could always, as, as usual, you could see Canelo Alvarez f to start to fatigue after the eighth round. And I was thinking, okay, maybe Edgar's gonna push it up, push it out at this point, but he still didn't. He allowed Canelo to fight at his pace. Um, showed a little bit too much respect for to Canelo, but and you know obviously Canelo was throwing the same combinations jab. He'll throw that hard shot to the body. Um, he was actually throwing looping punches as well. But Berlanga just had nothing for Canelo, man, um, at all. Oh, oh, my bad. So Canelo won. I think it was uh, nine rounds to three on one scorecard, and like ten rounds to two um, on the other two. Um, 
you know, nothing like you know, like I said, he, Berlanga showed heart. He definitely showed heart. Uh, he was definitely taunting Canelo a lot. He definitely got, got Canelo pissed off. There was, you know, he was leading, you know, kind of headbutting a lot. Uh, Canelo made him pay for that. He, you know, threw some low blows in there a few times or whatnot. But I, I, honestly, man, like he just he his main problem was he just he wasn't experienced enough in that type of fight, and he he looked very very much bigger than well, much bigger than Canelo or whatnot. But he didn't he didn't um, he allowed Canelo to fight at his pace, and I would have liked C Berlanga being a bigger man to uh, make Canelo fight when he doesn't want to fight. You can't just allow Canelo to fight in his first like he always does. Either way it goes, I mean, you know, Ber Berlanga has a bright future ahead of him. Canelo, um, you know, I, I don't know what he's going to do at this point after this fight. You know, uh, it's nothing. He, he doesn't have many opponents left. Um, unless if he wants to try to be a two-time undisputed champion at 168 uh, by fighting, I think, who, who has the IBF? What is that? The Williams Skull or whatever. Um, it's not that, you know, much left for Canelo at 168 pounds. Uh, I heard that he's going to try to make a fight with Conor McGregor next year that might be entertaining uh the build up at least i don't know but uh i you know the fight that i want but it's not likely to happen all right let me know what you guys think make sure you guys like comment, subscribe did you enjoy the fight which fight was your favorite but what do i know